welcome to State of Business on Art Television. I'm Ashing Sani Veera Singh. Let's have a look at the headlines for today. President Gotabe Rajapaksa claims Sri Lanka's Tamil politicians were not realistic on issues faced by the Tamil community in the North and East. Central Bank of Sri Lanka informs that the quid reporting will be restructured with a scoring system. News in detail. President Gotabe Rajapaksa claims that the Tamil politicians in Sri Lanka were not realistic with the issues faced by the Tamil community in the North and East and he is always ready to identify those issues and provide immediate solutions. President Rajapaksa made these remarks speaking to a journalist from the Hindustan Times during his three-day visit to India. The 30th Amendment is already in the constitution. There are certain areas where we can't the implement as it is because we need certain uh, changes in that and but I believe uh, more than that we, we are always trying to approach from one angle but uh, even the Tamil politicians must understand uh, you know that for, for since independence they're talking about devolution and all that but they, they were not uh, considering the development of that area the so uh, uh, you know answering the problems of the people the unemployment uh, the issues with the fisheries issues with the uh, agriculture you to, to move forward you know education um, these are things that i want to hand tackle while we were discussing these things otherwise at the end you are nowhere now the last government they were drafting constitutions and all those things you have to understand without the uh, consent of the majority you can't give solution so if if you come out with uh, certain things that which are suspicious to the majority community that cannot be implemented that that's a reality but so there are things that you know if you ask from the majority government no one will be uh, you know uh, disagree to give them the same opportunity to give live uh, to give uh, give the environment to live in dignity you know they are, uh, whether it is in religion or you know anything that that's no problem but unfortunately the politic the Tamil political leaders are harping on this one thing and since independence they are doing that without <laughs> going nowhere. So they must be very realistic. The United National Party calls the government to provide a detailed explanation as to how it will pay the country's huge debt burden against the newly announced tax reductions. Thus, this request was brought forward by the UNP parliamentarian Professor Arshu Marasingha at a media briefing attended by former ministers Rajatha Sena Ratna, Akhila Viraj Karyavasam and Lakshman Kiriella at the UNP headquarters today morning. Accordingly, addressing the media briefing, former minister Rajatha Sena Ratna said, President Gotabe Rajapaksa's claim on scrapping the 19th Amendment to the Constitution if he receives a two-thirds parliamentary majority on it, criticizing the former government is not fair since the amendment was passed after a debate in the parliament with majority's approvals. Further, elaborating on President's decision to appoint a committee consisting of six members to recommend qualified professionals for the topmost positions in state institutions, Rajatha Sena Ratna noted that the 19th Amendment leaves the Public Services Commission to appoint topmost officials without any political hindrance. Meanwhile, UNP parliamentarian Professor Arshu Mara Singha asked the government how it will pay the debt of 600 billion rupees and the interest of 1,020 billion rupees in 2020, which is the heaviest debt burden till date, at a moment when the taxes are reduced. Moreover, it was mentioned in the media briefing that 900 billion rupees was earned through the entire taxation system in 2018. Hence, with the proposed tax reductions, 496 billion rupees will be deducted. 
The United National Party is also asking whether this tax bonanza is only a short-term strategy or whether the government will sell the national resources in order to pay the heavy debt. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka informs that the country will reform the Credit Information Bureau listing with a scoring system for lenders instead of listing customers as bad debtors. Deputy Governor of the Central Bank, H. A. Karuna Ratna, expressed these views addressing the recent monetary policy review of the monetary policy stance. We have designed to give a new pace to the CRIP report by introducing a scoring system. From January onward, CRIP will be reporting a scoring system that score would be between 250 and 800. So therefore, uh, it will give a better information for the lending uh, entities to take their uh, informed decision. The Hotels Association of Sri Lanka says that it commends the government's decision to grant export status to the tourism industry and its decision to reduce taxation. However, the association also urges the government to maintain its new tax arrangement uninterrupted for a minimum period of five years since it will allow businesses to plan in advance, bringing stability to the economy. Accordingly, THASL President Sanatuk Watha highlights that the proposed tax reduction is one of the key right measures to boost the economy and increase investment. He said tourism's recognition as an export industry is a long overdue and hugely positive measure for which THASL has been lobbying actively for the last few years. THASL President Ukwatta further noted that eliminating NBT and the reductions to VAT in line with other export industries will help Sri Lanka's tourism compete with regional countries and create a highly favourable environment for business to grow. Moving on to the reduction of taxes, he urged the government to maintain this tax structure constant for a minimum period of five years, claiming that policy changeability and overnight fluctuations in taxation has been detrimental to planning and the business environment. Unexpected variations in taxes are costly for business. Many businesses keep large provisions for such fluctuations, taking money away from much-needed investment and keeping prices high for consumers. The THASL chief further noted. Stay tuned for more news after this short break. Welcome back after the break. Netherlands Ambassador to Sri Lanka Tanja Gongrip states that two main drivers of change in any country are educational institutions and companies or startups. Netherlands Ambassador to Sri Lanka made these observations at a media briefing to announce the Fashion for Good Innovation Day in Sri Lanka. Fashion for Good is a non-profit platform for sustainable fashion innovation based in the Netherlands and is finally coming to Sri Lanka, expanding its mission to bring together the entire ecosystem to make fashion a force for good. Fashion for Good and Colombo Innovation Tower have jointly curated a program for the very first Fashion for Good South Asia Innovation Day. The program includes some of the key promising innovators from the region as well as Fashion for Good alumni from around the globe who are disrupting the textile supply chain with key industry leaders and manufacturers attending and speaking at the event. Innovation Day also marks the pre-launch of the Fashion for Good South Asia program starting in January 2020 and the opening of the Colombo Innovation Tower. Who is then the driver of change? Who is the force for good? Let me be clear, there are many forces, to my opinion, but two important ones are here, the educational institutions and companies and startups. I always tell people, if you're looking for change and a more sustainable world, do not look at the government to take the lead. I can say that because I represent my government. We might take the lead as a country, but the companies together with universities and other educational institutions are the ones that will pioneer, that will invent, and innovate, and very importantly, that will educate and shape the future generations. Innovation is key, we've heard that already. We have to change our practices, our way of living, and we need innovation to accompany and to lead this process. 
We need to end highly polluting dyeing practices, reuse fabrics, and use organic alternatives. And we have to make sure that these best practices will be adopted on all levels of the garment industry, which is a huge challenge. Promotion campaign of Ceylon Tea was organized by the Office of the Honorary Consul for Sri Lanka in New Brunswick at the Diversity Champion Awards ceremony held recently at New Brunswick in Canada. The participation of the Honorary Consul's Office under the guidance of the High Commission of Sri Lanka in Canada was an initiative by Honorary Consul for Sri Lanka in New Brunswick, Dr. Sami Rajai Sena. The promotional event showcased a variety of Ceylon teas to a large gathering. At this event, Sri Lankan tea products and Ceylon tea hampers were auctioned at a silent auction. The promotion of Ceylon tea was made possible with the support of the Sri Lanka Tea Board. The Diversity Champion Awards celebrated individuals, organizations and businesses who have proven to be inclusive leaders in St. John, New Brunswick. It was also a key event that recognizes employers, organizations and individuals for their best practices in promoting diversity, inclusion and equality in St. John, New Brunswick, Canada. Let's now take a look at few more stories for the day in brief. Akin Spence emerged victorious at the Best Corporate Citizen Sustainability Award 2019, an award ceremony hosted by the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce in order to acknowledge and celebrate sustainability initiatives undertaken by the country's corporate citizens. Commercial Bank and Hatton National Bank were the first and second runner-up of the competition, respectively. The High Commissioner for Australia, David Hawley, delivered the keynote speech as the chief guest at the awards ceremony that was held in Colombo last Thursday. Sri Lanka High Commission in Singapore was invited to the Singapore Exchanger's Symbolic Securities Market Open Ceremony last week as part of its 20th anniversary celebrations this year. High Commissioner Shashikala Premawardhana was joined by Chief Executive Officer of Singapore Exchange, Loh Boon Shai, to mark the start of the trading day by striking the gong. Speaking at the occasion, the High Commissioner stated that Sri Lanka is rapidly consolidating its status as a country on the rise, characterized by considerable growth potential with an increasingly diversified and resilient economy. She further added that following the recent election of President Gotabe Rajapaksa, progressive reforms have been proposed aimed at achieving a GDP growth rate of 6.5% or higher during the 2020-2025 to period. A mobile consular service was conducted by the Embassy of Sri Lanka in Jordan at the classic fashion apparel factory premises in Irbid for approximately 1,500 Sri Lankans who are currently employed within the premises. This is the first of a series of mobile consular services the embassy will be rendering this year as part of its mandate to deliver consular services in distant locals where migrant Sri Lankan workers work and reside. Due to the mobile consular outreach activity initiated by the embassy, many of the Sri Lankans employed in the production lines at the classic fashion factory were able to avail of consular services without having to forego a day travelling 180 kilometres to Amman. We will be back after a short break. Welcome back after the break. Trading at Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a mixed note today. The All Share Price Index gained 3.26 points to close at 6,215.23 and the S&P SL20 dropped 18.81 points to close at 3,053.34. The turnover was 702 million rupees and over 38 million shares were traded. Up next are Forex rates. That's all the news for today. Join us tomorrow at the same time. Until then, take care. Good night.